Good morning. You ready? You here? You with me? I'm very glad of that. It is Monday morning. It is 9 o'clock. We are live on Facebook, or perhaps you're watching this later on repeat. Either way, thrilled to have you. Happy to be here. It is a Monday morning at 9 central time, and that means it is class time. I'm just booting up the laptop here. And I understand it's possible the world is burning. And what I mean by that is, as I'm getting ready to get set up, to get going, to join you online here, my wife pops down and says, hey, I just heard Zoom is down. Seriously? Zoom is having connectivity issues? The Zoom platform is down at 9 o'clock on a Monday morning when every single person in the business world and every single person in the world of education is on a Zoom call? I have problems, but I don't have problems like that. Makes me happy to be down here in the basement. Well, I'm on Facebook Live, so if that's working out, I guess I'm at least ahead in that regard. Milan Institute is checking in from all over. I see a bunch of names rolling and scrolling past me up there on the screen, and I'm happy to have my Milan friends joining uh, anytime they want to jump in on all the good things we have going on here. I am pulling up Facebook on my laptop. I kind of use that as a way to monitor the chat stream as we go. There's a lot going on here, and many of you may have noticed, hopefully you're noticing, seeing, feeling, better lighting. This is the first Monday class since the installation of the hot setup with better lighting. So um, I should look better, cleaner, clearer. I got a haircut since last Monday, so uh, I should look better because of that. But uh, the lighting should make a big difference. I've got some upcoming videos for which we made the little investment in better lighting. So we're bringing that to you fresh and early on a Monday morning. Today's program is a penny for your compliments. Got a bright, shiny penny right there. Got four more of them right here. Little jingle jangle if you can hear it. And we're going to talk about those pennies. And we're going to talk about a penny for your compliments as the topic of the week. Of course, when it's topic of the week, you know you're going to hear it in other places. You'll hear it live on Monday morning here in our class. You'll read about it on my website at ivanzoot.com in, in the Tuesday text blog. Uh, this video will be posted Thursday as my weekly recording. And of course, there's the podcast. The podcast gets recorded the prior Friday. So if you're a podcast subscriber, it's already out there for you. If you pick it up through my social links, those social links are put out on Friday. It's podcast Friday. But if you go to my Instagram, on, or my website. On my website, there's a podcast icon. On my Instagram, the podcast link, and you can subscribe, is on my profile on my Instagram. But uh, the podcast is catching on. This was episode three uh, of the new template, the new format, the new program that's hosting it. I've been podcasting for over a year. Um, but this is the new place to go for it, and it's knock on wood. Seems like it's working out really great. So welcome in, everybody. Settle in. Got yourself your drink. Water. For me, if you're coffee in the morning, fire it up. We're going to get ready, and we're going to get into today's topic. Of course, as many of you know, we always start with the reading from $100,000 Haircutter. And if you don't already have a copy of the book, you can pick one up on Amazon, and you can pick one up on my website. Today is... August 24. Can you believe August 24? Schools are starting. People are busy. Summer is in its last, you know, what do we got? Six weeks-ish of really great weather left to enjoy before uh, we get into uh, fall, before we get into October and the final three months of the year. August 24, day 236, with 129 days remaining, 129 days remaining in the year. And the August 24 tip is, it's a top 10. Guys, this is just a top 10 basic principle of success in haircutting. If you've heard about my $100,000 Haircutter Academy, and if you've looked at it, if you've 
uh, thought about participating. We have a sign-up round coming up really soon because we, we start people in the academy in groups, in classes, or in waves. We had our founders launch earlier in August, and September will be the first time the academy is going to be available to the general public. And the pro beauty industry, really. Um, I do want to mention that today's $100,000 haircutter tip is one of the dozen base principles of the $100,000 Haircutter Academy. You'll deep dive on this one. You will get a master's level graduate education in the August 24 topic as a part of the $100,000 Haircutter Academy. It is that important. It is that fundamental. As a matter of fact, I'm teasing you on it here before I tell you more about it, but this particular topic is really make or break. It is the single most important non-technical skill that a beauty and barber professional can ever develop. You can be a manicurist, you can be an esthetician, you can be an eyebrow threading specialist. I don't care how focused and narrow you are in the industry or how specific you work. Um, this is, I kid you not, um, a fundamental requirement. And I always love to say it is the single most important non-technical skill that must be developed by beauty and barber professionals. Some of you know what it is. Anybody got a hint? Everybody got an idea? Anybody know what's coming here? Rebooking. 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 I'll say it a few extra times. Rebooking is the art, and it's an art. When it's done well as a skill, there's an art to it. Rebooking is the art of getting the client on the appointment book today at the end of this visit for their next visit. Not letting them out the door, not letting them walk away, not letting them say, I'll call you, not letting them say, yeah, I'm not sure when I want to come back. Nailing them onto the book before they get out of the building. I'm not going to read you the listing for today. There it is on the top side right over there. It is rebook as many as you can. And by the way, there's a number. There's a goal. You know, anytime we start talking about statistics, your rebooking percentage, which is RR, I refer to it as R squared, R to the second power, or rebook rate. Rebook rate is expressed as a percentage. It is the mathematical answer to the question of the people that you cut, how many book their next appointment before they leave. Now there's two important numbers on this statistic, and this is like a mini class within today's class, and I'm thrilled to be sharing it because it's so near and dear to me and it's such a pet topic of mine. There's two numbers you need to know. One number is 100, 100, and one number is 80. 100 is your responsibility. You are responsible. You are required. If you worked with me on my team in my shop, I would hold your feet to the fire. You must offer rebooking. You must offer rebooking to 100% of your customers. Every customer, every haircut, every visit, every time, no exceptions, zero variation, zero wiggle room on this. You've got to offer rebooking to every single customer, period. That's one number, 100. That's your, uh, your reach. Now, your effectiveness is the second number, and that number is 80. Let's realize, not everyone's going to rebook. People have busy lives. People have plans. I don't know. The kids are starting school. I'm not sure how it's going to be. I don't know what's going to be going on. Not everyone's life is conducive to appointment booking in advance. And that's a realistic, that's an honest, and that's a legitimate claim they can make. They're not playing you, they're not scamming you, they're not ducking you, they're not avoiding you, they're being honest. I, I don't know. I, I gotta call you. Fine. Your job is to do your job. The client's job is to do 
their job. Your job is to offer the ask. Their job is to either go for it or not. And we respect the fact that they're going to choose to do or not to do their job. Totally cool. Not a problem. 80 and 100. You offer it to 100 and you strive for 80. You drive for 80. You look to hone your skills, improve your abilities, and get better at the ask so that you find 80%. 8 out of 10 of your customers saying, yeah, hook me up. The 28th, 4 o'clock, boom, let's do it. That's it. We can talk about it in a whole other class, a whole other program. I've got tons of videos for it online. If you can't find a video that talks specifically about that process or procedure, you are welcome to reach out to me through any social media, through my email or my phone. All this stuff's on my website at ivanzoot.com. $100,000 hair cutter, one idea a day, every single day for 365 days, plus a bonus week plus two additional chapters of monthly focus topics. This is the foundation for success in the business, whether you get it through the book. And by the way, if you don't want a paper book, there's digital download. If you don't want digital download, there's audio book. Or through a website, I have one tip a day, almost like shooting them at you. One tip a day every single day coming to you from me electronically. If you can't find that, Again, ask for help. I'll hook you up with it. Uh, I will put it in the comments. I'll put the link to that in the comments later on after this video is finished uh, for those that might be looking for that. Talking a lot, gotta keep the system flowing, keep things moving. Also, if you don't know about 100 by 100, that's 100 new haircut customers in 100 days. It was the follow-up book to $100,000 Haircutter. That's available for free. You want this book totally free? Just pay shipping and handling. Go to my website at ivanzoot.com and click on free book offer. 100 by 100. This is a business building plan. This is 100 new haircut customers in 100 days guaranteed. Get yourself a copy of that one or go to my website and get the four book bundle. That's all four titles as a bundle. 100 by 100, 100,000 dollar hair cutter, big busy barber shop, bigger busy barber shop. Those are my four books with a fifth one coming soon. Stay tuned. All right, are you guys ready to get into the topic of the week? The topic of the week is A penny for your compliments. Now, you've heard the expression, a penny for your thoughts. Penny for your thoughts. It means, tell me what's going on. It's a way of reaching out to and connecting with people. Well, today what I want to share is a penny for your compliments. What are we talking about here? This is a bit of a challenge. Now, everyone that knows me knows that Ivan is really, really big on a few simple basic things. That asking for referrals conversation is a pet conversation of Ivan's. When it comes to helping hair cutters, barbers, cosmetologists, nail techs, estheticians build and grow their business. And everybody that knows Ivan knows Ivan loves business cards. I'm old school in that way. I'm a little classic in that way. You could even describe me as low tech in this way. I love passing out business cards. I have the 500 business card challenge, which is a business card distribution challenge that I take people, uh, I offer up to people to see if they'll take me up on it to build and the, and the 500 business card challenge, it works. And today's penny for your compliments is a takeoff on that that also works. So, coronavirus circumstances that we find ourselves in have made people a little scared, a little skittish. We're not as comfortable with people out and about in public. And I realize this. And I realize that approaching someone and handing them a card might be a little much for people. It might back people off a little. It might 
scare people a little bit. It might come up with a little bit of resistance. But I still believe we need to be out and about, going about our lives, even if we're doing it, even if we're doing it with a mask on. We need to be out there interacting with people. And we want to be building business. We can't just roll over and say, all right, haircut business is terrible. What, what can I do? The answer is you can do a lot. The answer is you can be proactive about going after your business in very positive yet very aggressive ways that are comfortable, that are safe, and that work. So here's my idea. A penny for your compliments. You know, we're walking around with masks on, and by way of a little bit of sharing, I'm getting old enough that I'm having a little bit of hearing trouble. Maybe it's too many years with a blow dryer. Maybe it's too many years on the floor at trade shows with loud, thumping, pounding music. But my hearing is not what it used to be, what it could be. You know, maybe there's a hearing aid in my future, whatever. If we get there, we get there. I don't have issues or hangups with it. But one of the things that I've come to realize with coronavirus and with the masking of America is that I have relied a little bit on lip reading. And I think many of us hear with more than just our ears. We hear with our eyes. And what I mean by that is we're taking in lip reading for sure if we're doing a little bit of that, looking at somebody's mouth when they're talking, but I think we're also reading body language. You know, there's a difference between somebody who's coming at us very aggressive versus somebody who's calm, relaxed, and serene. There's a difference between someone who's very open to conversation versus someone who's very closed up to what we may be saying or offering. And the other place, not just lip reading and not just body language, but people are talking to us with their eyes. Because if everybody's wearing a mask, we're seeing the eyes. Have you found, like I have found, throw me a thumb or a heart or something if you agree with this. Have you found that you can tell when someone is smiling, wearing a mask? You can. You can see a smile through a mask, which is a very interesting phenomenon, which is a part of what I want to talk about now with a penny for your compliments. I want to challenge you, just like I challenge people with the 500 business card challenge. I want to challenge you to find five bright, shiny pennies. I have them right now. Tony says, you can see my wrinkles. Yeah, of course. Mine too. I knew what you meant. I can read typos. It's all good. Um, five bright, shiny pennies. Get them. Find them. Put them in your pocket. Now, it's important that you put them in your pocket. Put them in your right pocket. If you don't have pockets, if you're wearing a dress or a shirt or pants or whatever that doesn't have pockets, you're going to have to improvise a little. You might put them in a backpack pocket in your backpack, or you might put them in a compartment of a purse or a pouch or something you carry around. But you want to get five bright, shiny pennies. And you want to head out into the world every day with five bright, shiny pennies in one pocket. I'm going to put them in my pocket while we're talking right here. I can hear them in my pocket because they jangle around a little bit. My hearing's still good enough for that. And I can feel them in my pocket because they've got a certain amount of weight. It's not like lugging around a brick. But five pennies, they're there. I can hear them. I can feel them. And if you're anything like me, you got your hand in your pocket from time to time, you feel them jangling around in your pocket. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out and about in the world. I want you to live your life. I want you to do your deal. I want you to do the things that you do every day with five pennies in your right pocket. And as you go about your daily business, while we're mindful, we can't be shaking hands like we used to, and people might not want to be taking business cards from you like they used to, but I, what I want you to give out are compliments. 
I want you to compliment people. I want you to say something positive, something uplifting, something affirming, something nice to people when you see them. And you know, hey, we're in the hair business, so we're all about hair, but it doesn't have to be about hair. You know, people are getting creative. Are you seeing some really cool masks on people? Some really creative. I've seen some of the masks that like look like a puppy nose that are really adorable and cute. I've seen masks that feature sports teams and, and early on in the pandemic, I bought a, uh, a neck gaiter mask face covering thing that had a Chicago skyline and a Chicago flag on it. And I'm flying my city of Chicago pride. Um, We've seen them with, with patterns and fabrics and things that people have made. I've got a couple cool ones that were made for me that have different patterns on them. Hey, nice mask. That's a compliment. Love your hair. That's a compliment. Cool shoes. I actually did that the other day. My wife and I were out for a walk and we crossed paths with a neighbor at a distance. And we stopped to chat for a minute. And I looked down and he had on what were clearly, obviously, new shoes. And I said, new shoes, nice. That's all I said. It wasn't anything more than me being observant, being aware, but also recognizing when you say to someone, you have beautiful eyes. They may have beautiful eyes, but that wasn't their doing and that wasn't their choosing. These are the eyes I got. They were given to me. You might want to thank my parents, but it is what it is. But shoes are a little different. Shoes were a choice. Shoes are a reflection of someone's personal taste, views, and opinions. So I believe complimenting somebody's shoes is far more meaningful than complimenting their eyes. Because when you compliment someone's shoes, you're saying, I like your taste. I like your look. I like your viewpoint. It's more of a personal compliment than you have beautiful eyes. So compliment somebody. When you're out and about and doing and living and being, compliment somebody. Offer up a compliment. Number one, they're free. Number two, they make the world a better place. Number three, people think better of you immediately after you do something like that. And I'm not suggesting that we compliment people only for, or at all for, personal self-serving reasons. But I want you to be aware of the fact that what goes around comes around. So here's how this works. The five penny compliment challenge, a penny for your compliments. When you compliment somebody, take a penny out of your right pocket and move it to your left. And when you do it again, Later in the day with somebody else, move another penny from your right pocket to your left pocket. The object of the game is to move all five pennies from your right pocket to your left pocket throughout the day. If each and every one of us found a time and a place and a situation in which we were able to offer up five compliments a day, if we were able to do this, even with our reduced social contact, with our reduced social access, and our reduced exposure to other folk while wearing a mask, behind that mask, find opportunities to compliment people. Use the pennies as a way to hold yourself accountable, and use the goal to get all five of these pennies from your right pocket to your left pocket by the end of the day. When you get home at the end of the day and you're kind of changing clothes, unloading your pockets, kind of winding down for the day, I put my keys on the table in the hall, I put my wallet and my phone on the shelf in my office, in one of your pockets or both, you're going to have some pennies. Ideally, you'll have five pennies in your left pocket but you might have two with three in the right pocket. Tomorrow, you wanna to work just a little bit harder to find just a couple few extra more places that you can leave a compliment behind 
and move a penny from pocket to pocket. When this becomes habit, when this becomes part of what you do, don't stop with the pennies. Continue to use the pennies as a reminder of what you're doing and why you're doing it. At some point, your partner, your spouse, your kid, your friend, someone is going to say, hey, what's with the pennies? And you're going to be able to say, those are my compliment pennies. I use those to remind myself to be spreading joy, good cheer, positivity, warmth, happiness, wherever I go. And you know what? It won't take but a few days for this to become a habit. And that's why I like the notion of gaming it. Let's be honest. The pennies are just a little game. The pennies are just a way to remind ourselves. It's a way to compliment ourselves on winning when all five pennies truly do wind up in your left pocket. And you know, there are times when you're going to issue a compliment or offer up a compliment and forget to move a penny. Fine. There may be days when you'll leave all five pennies at home and you'll say something nice to someone and you'll reach into your pocket and the pennies won't be there. And you go, oh, I forgot my pennies today. But you didn't forget the compliments. And you know what? It starts conversations. What's your name? Oh, you're Ivan? Yeah, I'm Ivan. I cut hair down the block at ABC Barbershop. And all of a sudden, the conversation gets rolling. And you never know where these relationships, where these reactions, and where these interactions will go and will grow. So a penny for your compliments is our topic of the week this week. I'd love to know how this works for you. I'd love to know what you're doing with this idea. I'd love to know how this idea helps your, you, helps your community, and helps your life. And if you want to bring it back around to hair, if you want to hyper-focus this on hair or fingernails or whatever it is that you do in the business, that's okay too. You can take it that route. Say to yourself, I'm going to focus my compliments. I want to say five things to five people about great hair. I want to be out. I mean, I'm all, you're doing this already. You're looking at hair. You're evaluating hair. You're thinking about hair. You're commenting on hair, if maybe just to the person you're with. <laughs> Look at the hair on that one. Let's take it to the next level. Let's find the positives. Let's be looking for hair. Look for hair that fits your personal take on hair. Hair that you like. I mean, I'm the short hair guy. So when I'm out and about looking for hair, I'm looking for great short hair. When I am offering up comments and compliments more often than not, because what I like is great short hair. If you've got great long hair, it's reasonable to think that there's a good chance I even might not notice. It's just not my jam. It's just not where I'm focused and it's not where I'm looking. That doesn't mean your long hair isn't lovely. That doesn't mean you don't like it. It doesn't mean other people don't like it. It's just, I got my horsey blinders on. It just might not be what I see, focus on, or think about. Uh, fingernails are another great one. You know, when people are interacting with us, when, when a cashier at Walmart is handing you change, you've looked at fingernails, you've noticed. You've noticed if somebody has well-manicured nails. You've noticed if somebody has extravagantly manicured nails. And you've also noticed if somebody has chewed their cuticles all the way up to their elbow. You've noticed. We see these things. I might not comment on that one, but if you've got a beautiful manicure, or if you've got some really sharp nail art, even though nails are not my jam, chances are I'm going to say something. Oh, wow, cool nails. That's it. Do you notice how long it took me to say that? Notice how quick that was? And it could be hit and move on, and, and you might think it isn't even noticed. And you might not realize the transformational effect it has on someone's life. So that's it. A penny for your compliments is the topic of the week, the idea of the week. Find your five shiny pennies. Get them in that pocket. And if you run into me, if we're ever out and about in public again, and we will be, if I'm ever at a trade show again, if they have them, you, know, you could compliment me or ask me if I have my pennies.
Because I'm not asking you to do something I myself don't do. I'm not asking you to do something I myself wouldn't do. And I'm asking, not asking you to try something that I haven't myself tried to incorporate into what has helped me be more successful in the haircut business. Okay, guys, couple of reminders. Tonight is the webinar. Tonight, free webinar. Absolutely free. Um, hopefully, Zoom will be up and running because that sucker's hosted on Zoom. There's a link in my Instagram profile. There's a link on all my social media pages and spaces and places. This is building haircut business in the post-coronavirus lockdown environment. We were locked down. We've been opened up. Hopefully, Everyone is opened up. I know California continues to have some challenges in this regard, but how do we build and grow business post Corona virus lockdown? This is a totally free webinar. You must register in advance for the webinar. The registration link is in my Instagram and it's all over my social media pages. This will be at 8 p.m. Central time tonight. And I look forward to having you join me for that. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you find at least five little compliments you can hand out for your pennies in your pocket. Get bright, shiny ones, because there's nothing more hopeful and optimistic for the future of you and your life and everything else than a bright, shiny penny. You might not be able to buy much with it, but you can give much with it in the way of a compliment. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for being here. I'm Ivan. Ivanzoot.com, of course, is the website. Follow me in all my social spaces. Get a couple of books to help you build and grow your business. We'll see you here next Monday at 9 a.m. because we do that every week. And we'll see you throughout the week. You'll hear me on the podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, like the video, comment on the video, share the video, turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel. You know how all that stuff works, right? Of course you do. Have a great day.